Terry Sanders, and I'm producer director of Fighting for Life. It's a film that uh, grew as it was being made. It started out to be a film about a school, USU in Bethesda, Maryland, which is the uh, West Point of Military Medicine, and the students call it the best medical school no one's ever heard of. And the reason for making it is uh, a mom of one of the students at the school realized that uh, it was going to be closed because nobody knew about it. For cost-cutting reasons, the government was going to close it down. So this mom, Tammy Alvarez, with great passion, uh, raised all the money and came to me and said, uh, can you make this film? So I started it in research, uh, like in 2004. But then the war in Iraq grew and grew and grew and it became and enlarged in scope enormously until it became uh, this odyssey into the world of military medicine. And then yeah. it became a kind of uh, meditation on the wounded and the war. Um, I think that for a film crew, we had the most access that any film has ever had in modern times, as far as access. And uh, at the same time, complete creative control. Like there's not a dime of uh, government money in the film, or the school money for that matter. The school is the subject of the film in many ways, but has no had no say other than letting us go in the film. As far as getting into the combat zone in Iraq, that was uh, took some doing, and uh, this film had to be a political. It would have been uh, the kiss of death to be either right wing, left wing, or anything. Uh, and I didn't want. To, I didn't, never want to preach to the choir because it's a waste of money and time and everything. So it took about six months actually to develop the relationships. You know, not just the general. You know, maybe you can go somewhere, but actually the specific relationships to get us over there to Balad. I didn't want to go driving around on the roads in, in uh, Iraq. You know, I wanted to specifically go to this hospital, and then. Even though that you're there, you may have the uh, physical kind of entry way. You still have to develop the emotional relationships with people that you're filming, so that they trust you and, and open up to you. you know. But there's nothing that uh, we couldn't film. Well, yeah, it's well, basically all uh, a balance. You know, you want to show enough blood and gore. To uh, remind people that war is kind of uh, blood, blood, you know, it's blood and gore. But you, you want to make sure that you don't drive the audience a out of the theater or have them have their hands over their face so they can't look at it. So I think it was very restrained. I, th I think, but uh, I was certainly very conscious of, you know, it's, it's a matter of uh, sec of court of, you know, fractions of a second if you show something too long. This. Can't do that if you shoot too short, then it's too confusing. And because I think that uh, I never want to exploit violence for the weird, for whatever maybe weird component the audience wants to see blood and gore. I feel people sat around the table and, and said, "Let's show this gruesome thing because it'll, it'll help make more money." You know, I think that's uh, offensive. You know, I think it's too much is gratuitous violence in, in uh, a lot of films. Well, it was made over, it was shot over a period of two years. The whole production was over three years. But I shot uh, with two great cameramen, Eric Garstad and Buddy Squires. Eric I've worked with on probably 30 films or more. And Buddy Squires is uh, Ken Burns' main cameraman. They both did like superb cinema verite camera. I shot 150 hours for the 89 minute film. So I shot a lot of material that you know, was either less good or not good at all even. You know? And uh, many, many uh, people, and, and when, you, when you're doing documentaries, certain people pop out at you. People, certain people have that star quality or whatever. They come across to the camera and um, you know, the camera loves them or whatever. But also you're thinking of the structure of the film and, this person would be good and so forth. So there were some good people in it, but the scenes weren't that good. So every, everything that wasn't an emotional, powerful scene, 
ultimately, well, by the dice scene, was, was taken out. So that everything in that 89 minutes is pretty uh, distilled to A, hold the audience's attention, because I you don't want to lose them for a moment. I feel that it does, and uh, is, is basically emotional.